Did you know that you can use calculus to compute how many holes a space has? Let's take a look at two examples. The top is the Euclidean 3 space with no origin, and the bottom is without z-axis. The bottom space has one dimensional hole, since there is one obstruction that can prevent the loop from contracting down to a single point. And the top space has a two dimensional hole, as there is one obstruction that prevents a sphere from contracting to a single point. Now, over any three dimensional space, the curl of gradient and the divergence of curl are always equal to zero. Perhaps, a more interesting question is whether if the curl of a function is zero, it must be the gradient of another function. And whether if the divergence of a function is zero, it must be the curl of another function. In fact, the extent to which this fails to be true measures the number of holes in our space. Over 3D space with no origin, there is exactly a one-dimensionally infinite family of functions whose divergence is zero, but not the curl of any other function. And this is the same function as the electric field of a single static charge. And over 3D space with no z-axis, there is exactly a one-dimensionally infinite family of functions whose curl is zero, but not the gradient of any other function. And this is the same as the magnetic field around an infinitely long wire. So counting non-contractible spheres and counting divergences that are not curls both capture the same number of two-dimensional holes. And counting non-contractible circles and counting the curls that are not gradients both capture the same number of one-dimensional holes. And how these seemingly different concepts capture similar information truly highlights the beauty of mathematics. Unfortunately, to fully understand the extent of similarities and differences between these different types of hole counting methods, you'd likely need to spend a solid three to four semesters studying graduate level geometry and topology.